we want to make the world's smallest violin. Here it is on this chip. It measures 13 micrometers across and it's 35 micrometers tall. The nanofraser is what we call a thermal scanning probe microscope. It's like this very, very, very small needle that can see atomic interactions. So we take that needle and we heat it up. It can burn away material. Because it can burn away material, we can use it to write patterns. And these patterns are so small that you can't even see it with an optical microscope. If you take the average human hair, something between 15 and 120 microns, smaller than that. You have to use the interaction of this needle with that material, so you've got these atomic interactions, to then see what you've patterned. To create the world's smallest violin, we have a multi-step process. And we start with our clean chip and put it into the glove box, where we coat it with a very thin layer of polymer. We take this chip and then put it underneath the nanofraser, load our pattern in the nanofraser software, and then set the parameters so that the small tip which gets hot, writes the violin pattern into the polymer. The next step is to dissolve the polymer and it only dissolves where we wrote the pattern. So we are left with a hole in the shape of a violin. We then take the chip and transfer it to the deposition chamber where we deposit a platinum layer. We then take out the chip out of the system and put it in some acetone. To remove all of the polymer, we are then left behind with the violin. Now that we have the platinum body of the world's smallest violin, we want to add the copper strings. And to do that, we just repeat all of the steps again. The very easy to understand analogy is screen printing. In screen printing, you create a stencil of your design, place it onto your t-shirt and then squeeze through the color. And then you peel off the stencil and you're left over with your design on the t-shirt. And this is very similar what we do just on a smaller scale. Building the world's smallest violin may all seem like fun and games, but a lot of what we've learned in this process has essentially laid the groundwork for the research that's going to be implemented here. It will allow us to design experiments so that we can really probe different materials um, in different ways. So that could be with light, magnetism, electricity, and see what the response is. And once we know that response, we understand it, then we can use it in different ways in new technologies to improve on, say, how efficient a computer is, or let's try and harvest some energy while we're at it. But first we need to understand the basic science, and that, that's what it will enable.